Hello everyone and welcome back. This should hopefully be the final part in this small little project to add the pagination and the searching to our application. For this one, I wanna start by modifying our Rails seed real quick. You don't have to do this if you'd rather just go in and create a couple of posts manually. I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna modify the seed to be a much larger number just so that we have something in here to work with. I'm gonna go with like 100 posts this will destroy all of our previous posts, so just be aware of that. And then I'll do a db colon seed. It'll destroy all our posts, then it'll create 100 new posts, and then I'll run a Rails S. I'm not seeding it with images. Uh, we're just going with whatever we have here. Now, this isn't going to work out of the box. I'm remembering because we left this in a bit of a state because we have a couple of things undefined, uh, but this will at least give us something to test with. So let's come over to our post list again, and let's see if we can finish up this app real quick. So. In our post list, we have to set up the current page, the total posts, or yeah, the total posts, the per page, and the handle page change. So the first thing we want to ask ourselves is where all of these things are going to come from. Our total posts, we already know this list right here from our use post data has been updated. So this should now be returning the, uh, sorry, it should be returning the total posts as well as a per page. Uh, and let me just verify this by coming into our use post data. If we come down to the bottom, we should have posts, loading, error, total posts, and per page. That seems correct. We have our fetch posts. Uh, we have our loading. We have our error. We have our total posts and our per page. These should hopefully be in the right order, uh, but chances are I've probably messed this up somewhere. So these will all be set to our use post data, but our use post data, if you'll recall, also takes in a page parameter now. So for that one, what I wanna do is I want to pass in a, oops, a current page. So we'll come in here, we'll do comma, current page. So that does mean that our current page here is still undefined, so we have to actually set this up. So to set all this up, we're gonna start, we're gonna have our search term. We have our uh, search term, set search term, which is just set to an equal string. We then have our debounced search term that we have right here. Then we have our search parameters, which I don't know if we have yet. So we're gonna have to create our search parameters. For this, we're gonna use search params. This comes from the React router DOM. Then we're gonna have the initial page URL. Because remember, for a lot of this, we're gonna have to set up the searching as well as the pagination. So we're gonna create a initial page URL, which we're then going to feed into our Oops, our current page, assuming VS Code works. So we have this initial page URL, which again, when the component refreshes, it'll grab this. We have our page and our one, we pass those in here as the initial state. Then we have these new sets that we have to use. We also have our posts right here that we have set up. So how are we gonna do all of this? Well, let's come in here, because we have to scroll down a bit. We have to make sure that we're, we're a little bit meticulous here. So I have to read my notes very carefully. This use effect, we're still good with. We do need a new use effect for the searching. So let's do that right here. We're gonna say use effect. And this is where, like I was saying before, there's a good chance that I've probably set this up, uh, not how you would currently do it in React. But remember, I'm not, I'm not a React developer. I'm not even a Rails developer. I do this for fun most days. Uh, so, <laughs> You get what you pay for, and it's a free tutorial. So we have the initial search term right here, which we set to search params that get search. And then if that doesn't exist, we just set it to the empty string. So if we don't have a search term, we're good. If we do have one, we can set it. And then the other thing we have to do is uh, set our uh, page URL again, which we get from our URL where we say search params get page. If we don't have one, we set it to one. And then we set the current page to be a number from our page URL because we're expecting it to be a string. So then we set it to a number. So that is our use effect here. We then have our delete post handler, which I think I did refactor a bit. This one looks a little bit different than what I have over here. So let me just paste this in and see what the difference is. Uh, it looks like I'm using previous posts here to filter. I don't think that really changes anything. That might have just been a, a remnant of some intermediate refactors. We then have our handle immediate change, our handle debounce change. Uh, we do need to create that one function, this handle page change. So let's go ahead and let's do that. We'll say const handle page change is equal to page arrow function. For this one, we just wanna set the current, oops, set the current page to be the page. And then we want to update the URL to include the 
uh, page number. And we can come in here and we can say set search parameters. Now we know that the set search parameters uh, needs to be search set to debounced search term and the page needs to be the page. And then that should be good. And let me actually pull out of here real quick and see how much stuff I've broken by doing this. This seems fine. It is testing 12 times now on initial load, which is something we do need to also consider that there's quite a bit happening here. Uh, one thing that we should watch out for is we have uh, a lot of stuff on this first page and we don't actually have any page numbers appearing. So let's go ahead, let's pull back the search params for now and just go to the home page. We click on next and click on previous. This seems to be navigating between pages just fine, but there's probably something here that I've managed to break in some way, shape or form. So let's go ahead and let's just take a look at what we have so far. First thing I wanna do is in our use post data, our search term here does have an error because this does also need to have our page in it. Then I wanna come over to our post list. In our post list, we do have a different order for uh, these things right here. We have our posts, we have our total posts in my notes, then we have loading error and per page, which corresponds to in our use post data uh, in our use posts data, we have our posts, loading, error, total pages, and per page. Then I wanna come into the use URL search param because we gotta change this around a bit, I believe. We're gonna change this from using state to just using the search params. It'll take in the param name and an initial value, that's still fine. But I wanna change this right here to just be the search params. Then for our params value, I wanna get this directly from the search parameters, which I'll do right here. So we're gonna change this a bit to get this directly from our search params. Then I want to set this to not be a use effect anymore. So I'm actually gonna change this. We're gonna use a set param here instead. And we're gonna say, if we have a value, then we want to, uh, let's say update, oops, sorry, update. Uh, only the specific parameter uh, and pres preserve uh, the others, something like that. So we'll say set search params where we do a, uh, and I actually have this done in a different way in my notes. We do a dot, 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 object, dot from entries for our search params. And we have a comma and we have a, uh, what do I have, param name? Yep, just, just what I had there, param name is set to value. Then we have our uh, else block. For our else block, which we can do right here, we have a uh, remove the parameter if its value is uh, falsy is what I have. For that we can say search params dot delete the param name, and then we can say set search params to be that. Let's go ahead and let's save this. This will still uh, not have changed too much, but uh, we at least at this point have a closer code base to what we're expecting. The next place we wanna go to is gonna be our post service. Inside of our post service, our search post now needs to take in a page equals whatever. I'm gonna set this to one by default. I'm going to refactor this uh, response to be slash post slash question mark q equals query and page is equal to page. So we're gonna change that a little bit because we do need that. Then we're also gonna come up here to our fetch all posts. And for our fetch all posts, we're gonna change this to just be the post API URL to be the page is equal to a page parameter, which means page needs to equal one by default for this one. And now in this, you can hopefully see if we click next now because of those changes, we're at least navigating between all of our various pages here. So that's the next thing that we've taken care of. And then finally to fix these page numbers not appearing, I think we're gonna have to come down into our uh, mapping here and get rid of this is where I think the issue was happening before. Now, unfortunately, that means we do have to get rid of this and that should hopefully clean this up. There we go. And now we have our actual page numbers. Sorry about that. Uh, and now if we come in here and we click on next, we'll hopefully see these posts changing, but I'd prefer to see this in an actual 
uh, you know, like tested application. So let's go ahead and let's just create a thing here with some data. We'll give it the Armstrong image again, click create post, go back to our post list. Now we can see hello is on page one. We can come back here. We also see we now have 51 total uh, posts. If we go up to page seven, I expect this layout to shift. There we go. We can now see we have one dot, 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 four, five, six, seven. Because remember we went minus three and plus three from our uh, current area in our pagination. We had that create range for the middle pages right here. We had minus three plus three. So that's where all of that's coming from. Uh, the other thing we can do in here, we could search for one of these words. Let's just try this one. Uh, and I uh, guess we only have two pages worth of results. We're still on page seven. Again, that's where you would change this to uh, either reset to page one or however you want to handle this. But let's say we're on like page two. Uh, there seems to be one, two, three different results here. Maybe you'd also want to count the total number of search results. Uh, but if we were to search for like the letter E, we're going to get 51 res results. We could search for the letter T. That'll give us 50. Let's look for TA. So that's 34 different things. Let's come over to like page 14. And now let's look for, I don't know what usually comes after that. Let's do a L. I don't expect there to be 14 results here. So that's where we're kind of in a bit of a pickle. We look for TAE. Uh, it looks like we get six pages worth of results here. That said, if I want to go back to TA, uh, I could probably do this and I'd still be on that same page. So that's where it really depends on how you want to set this up. Uh, I would leave it as an exercise for the viewer because it's just like a one or a two line change to hopefully make this work. Uh, but of course, that's something I can cover in a previous, in a, sorry, in a subsequent video if you want me to, for how to change this to like revert back to page one if uh, we change the um, the search parameter. Because remember, whenever you change it, you're going to come back to your post list. You're going to have a current page that's being set you could then reasonably reset this current page on, I don't know, let's say a handle change callback for your search, you know, just somewhere where you'd want to change that, right? But I'm gonna leave that for you because for now, I think we're in a state where this is actually working. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've put in <laughs> my, my hours for the week. So let's go ahead and let's just push this up. We'll do a git status, which is gonna have a bunch of files that were changed. We'll do a git add dot, git commit dash M and I'll say this is E29 finished because I did some intermediate commits off camera and we can do a git push to push this up. We can then come over to our GitHub repo. We should have a new change here that we can merge. We'll say compare and pull request for this implement pagination. We'll click on create pull request. We'll then go ahead, we'll actually merge it this time. And once we click confirm merge, that should hopefully close that issue. And now we're back to wherever we were before. Now I do want to point out also, uh, because of this, we probably broke quite a few tests. Oops, if we run a NPM run test, we'll see some of the tests are failing and then I'll run a coverage as well. Uh, Cause remember we don't have tests for these new hooks that we've created, for example, or the new pagination component. So we're gonna have quite a few failed tests here because we changed some of the service stuff. Uh, so we have five failed tests, but if we run an NPM run coverage, it's probably gonna look even more bleak uh, although in a lot of cases, it probably isn't even touching these components yet. So we're not even seeing how much we aren't covering yet. Uh, but here we can see we have the pagination components not covered. We have the search bar components not covered. Our post list is now not completely covered. So you can see quickly, you change something and suddenly you're missing a quarter of your application's coverage. So that is something you want to be cognizant of when you do these things. But we can handle testing all this in the future. For now, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.